Hi! In today's video, I will conduct an experiment of the direct measurement of the speed of light. As I mentioned in my previous blog posting last week, uh, which I will link it down below, the direct measurement of the speed of light can be a bit challenging, especially when the measurement distance is small. Now, this is due to the fact that light travels very fast at roughly 300,000 kilometers per second or uh, 30 cent uh, centimeters per nanosecond. To achieve even some level of accuracy will require the generation and measurement of very fast rising signals. I think what I'm going to do for this video is uh, first to just do a very brief uh, discussion of the circuit and then I will show you the experiment and after which I will kind of come back to take a look at the uh, the circuits in detail because not everybody is interested in the uh, you know the plumbing behind the scene. So for the experiment we'll need a short pulse generator and a pulse receiver. Here is the uh, Avalanche pulse generator, capable of generating sub-nanosecond pulses. And uh, the only difference is in place of the, uh, the load resistor, the 50 ohm re load resistor, I replaced it with this uh, off-the-shelf 650 nanometer, uh, nanometer uh, laser diode. And these laser diodes, you can find them very cheaply on eBay for about a dollar each. And they have nothing but just a current-limiting uh, resistor uh, soldered in place. So what I did for this application is uh, uh, removing this uh, resistor, basically just rewiring this uh, uh, wire to the other side so that essentially bypassing the, the current limiting mechanism. And uh, of course it, it will not work if you are using it for continuous mode, but for pulse operation it is actually quite neat. So let me hook up this uh, uh, Avalanche uh, laser pulse generator uh, to the power supply to show you, uh, you know, to show you the the laser coming out of this. And uh, as you will see, that the laser is certainly visible, but it's not as bright as you you might you know think. It's a, even though the energy per pulse is pretty high, but uh, the pulse duration is very short. So as you can see, you can barely just see the, the red laser coming out. And later in the experiment, I will turn off the light so that uh, uh, you can actually, oh, look at the nice uh, effect here. Uh, then you can see uh, you know, it more clearly, hopefully. So now let me just uh, remove this. By the way, when you're working with these uh, uh, high voltage power supplies, be very careful not to you know, accidentally touch it, otherwise you'll get a nasty shock. So for the receiver side, uh, we have, uh, what I have is a, a photodiode, not photodiode, it's a photomultiplier based uh, receiver. And again, the main uh, consideration for using a photomultiplier uh, as my receiving unit is for its very fast rise time. And the photo, uh, the photomultiplier inside this unit is a 931B, which has a, you know, it's not the fastest rise time. The rise time is uh, spec uh, specified at two nanoseconds or less, but certainly that's uh, good enough for our application. And uh, uh, later on, after the experiment, I'm going to, again, uh, open this up and show you the construction inside. But uh, uh, this is also a, this is another high voltage pulse, uh, high voltage uh, power supply that uh, I built for this uh, uh, photomultiplier unit, and uh, the output voltage is uh, 1,250 roughly, uh, which is the maximum uh, operating voltage for this uh, 931B, and uh, the output is uh, com uh, coming from this coax uh, tape uh, cable and hooked to a, uh, well, here is a one kilo ohm resistor. And ideally, you would want to match this with a, a 50 ohm resistor, but, uh, you know, uh, because of the, uh, the, the uh, light current uh, is uh, not high enough and my oscilloscope is not sensitive enough, so we have some compromise here and to, to have this 1K uh, resistor, which I will explain a little bit more again later. But uh, so here, so these are the basic uh, two things we're going to use for our uh, light speed uh, measurement experiment. 
and uh, now let me set up the uh, uh, set everything up and we'll take a look so let's take a look at the uh, the setup uh, you have to excuse me if you see any shaking because I have to kind of hold it the camera by hand otherwise I wouldn't be able to get everything in um, so anyway, so here you can see that I mounted the laser on a helping hand and right now the laser is actually working and you can see the red dot and this laser would shoot uh, towards this mirror and uh, right now I'm just using this, uh, sorry if you can't see, I'm just using this, uh, uh, the platter of a hard drive uh, as my mirror and uh, it hits the mirror and then it reflects back towards this uh, photomultiplier and we have the opening here so uh, the idea is that the laser would bounce right back. Now we will set a reference point. Maybe uh, you know I'm gonna be I think I'm gonna be placing this uh, right against the, uh, this table as my starting point. Then we're gonna measure the the pulse delay, and uh, then we will move it to a uh, certain distance away and measure it again. So then we will know the time of flight, and then with that and the distance information, we can use to calculate the uh, the speed of light. And right now, because the room is uh, bright, and actually I have the oscilloscope up, and you probably can only see the upper uh, signal. That signal is actually the uh, the pulse uh, of the uh, the laser light, and uh, as you can see, that's an extremely fast rising signal. Um, at the bottom, that's the, uh, the photomultiplier output. And right now you can't see anything yet because the environment is so bright that it saturates everything. Uh, so the output, because of uh, AC coupled, you can't see, really see anything. But later I'm going to turn off the light when we're uh, conducting the ex experiment. So now I turned off the light, actually uh, you can see this, uh, well actually it doesn't quite come out to, uh, as uh, well as I thought it would be, but uh, you can only see the oscilloscope, uh, oscilloscope now, nothing else, but anyway, so right now hopefully you can see my pointer, uh, the upper one again is the laser uh, generated uh, from the pulse generator, and the lower one is the received pulse. Uh, you can see the, 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 the slope here, that's where the photomultiplier uh, detects the signal. And so we're going to use this as our, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the fixed reference because right now um, the delay is actually caused by either the circuit or, I mean, the circuit plus my the distance between um, the mirror and the, uh, the photomultiplier. So we will actually uh, record that as uh, you know our starting point. So right now as you can see the uh, uh, delay is roughly 20.45 nanoseconds. So I'll write that down and we will take a look at uh, uh, after I move the, uh, the, the reflecting mirror back uh, for a fixed distance. And now as you can see, I move this mirror back uh, further and I'm going to walk slowly so that uh, it doesn't shake too much. Now you can see that um, the, uh, the oscilloscope, uh, of course, the, uh, the received edge uh, shifted out a little bit. So let me put the camera back on the tripod so that we can see what that distance is. Okay, so now I have it set up. So now I'm going to come here to uh, adjust this. So originally we're at 20.45. So now let me uh, adjust the receiving edge. Um, so now it went to uh, 30.16. So let me write that number down and we'll calculate. Uh, the distance between the table and the receiver is quite uh, hard to capture on camera, but I just measured it. It's a 1.45 meter, and it, as you can see, here is my ruler, and here is a 1.45, and here is my receiver, and that thing is on the table right now. But So now let's do some calculation. Uh, when we first measured, uh, if you recall, we had the, uh, the mirror right against the table. The T1 uh, between the two pulses is uh, 20.45 nanoseconds. And oh, sorry about that. Let me move it down a little bit. And uh, when we um, move the mirror further back, we measured uh, the difference between the uh, the rising edge of our 
laser pulse and the receive and the falling edge of our uh, multiplier uh, receiver mount edge is at 30.16 nanosecond. So the difference, let's calculate. It's uh, 30.16 minus 20.45 is a nine point so the difference here is a nine point uh, seven one nanoseconds okay so that's our time interval and the distance is uh, uh we moved one point four five d equals one point five meter and we need to time that by two because uh, uh you know the light made the wrong trip uh, round trip so uh so our speed of light c equals uh, uh, 2 times 1.45 over 9.71, which is, uh, let's take a look at here, so 2 times 1.45 and uh, divide by uh, 9.71. So it's roughly, uh, you know, th this is, a, again, this is a, a meter per second, right? So this is a 0 0.29 uh, nine meter per, per nanosecond, rather. So, which is, uh, uh, this would be equivalent of uh, 2.9 times 2.99 times 10 to the 8th uh, power uh, meter per, oh, sorry, kilometer per second, which is uh, 300,000 kilometer per second. So, as you can see that uh, the measurement is uh, uh, roughly in line with uh, the, the true speed of this uh, speed of light. And this... Uh, Furthermore, this measurement can be very accurate because, as you can see, we have quite a bit of resolution in our time measurement, and we have quite a bit of resolution in our uh, distance measure measurement here. And with this number, you know, further refined, we can uh, potentially measure, uh, you know, even more accurate. Uh, uh, sorry about that. It uh, should be really should be a uh, 2.99 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. Uh, so originally it was correct, not a kilometer. So, as mentioned earlier, now let's take a look at uh, the circuit in a little bit more detail. And uh, here is a diagram of uh, uh, essentially uh, just the, uh, the avalanche uh, oscillator portion and the inverter portion, there's really not much to see. Uh, anyway, so we're supplying a 120 volt uh, supply voltage and uh, uh, the LD, the laser diode, is in place of where uh, typically a load resistor would be. And uh, if you recall, uh, in one of my previous uh, articles, that uh, the you know the resist load resistor is usually 50 ohm, so you can match that with a uh, your BNZ cable going out. So for the optimal pulse shape. Now, because of this, uh, you know, laser diode is directly uh, hooked up between the emitter and the ground. And uh, its characteristics is not probably not going to be a pure resistive, actually definitely not a pure resistive element. And so it's quite complex and that affects your pulse shape. So for some other, you know, in some other areas you can see that uh, uh, what people usually do is put a uh, pulse shaping network uh, at the emitter. And so it's a little bit more complex. Uh, than this, than this very simple one. But for our simple application, you know, this does the its job reasonably well. So um, that's pretty much everything uh, you need to know about this uh, uh, avalanche pulse generator. And the good thing is that uh, you can use, you know, a commercial cheap laser diode uh, in place of those really expensive pulse mode uh, infrared lasers. Now let's take a look at the uh, photomultiplier uh, circuit a little bit. And uh, uh, this one actually, I, uh, the, you know, the, this construction I took, this box actually I took was directly from that, if you recall, PM2L, uh, this uh, uh, photo, uh, you know, color uh, analyzer. And, uh, um, but I did have to make some modifications to the actual uh, circuit to make it more suitable for our use. So if you look at here, um, this, by the way, this um, photomultiplier is a 931 type of photomultiplier. And if you look at its uh, operating characteristics, it's uh, probably not the most ideal for uh, our application, uh, just because, you know, it's the most sensitive uh, region is in, uh, in the blue to ultraviolet uh, section. 
and the amount of visible region is okay but you know as soon as you like step towards the uh, the red and deep red and the infrared region is you know the efficiency drops significantly but our application you know our laser is right sitting at the 65 uh, 650 nanometer so it's not its most uh, ideal operation range so potentially you can improve the sensitivity of this uh, circuit if you can find a cheap you know like uh, let's say green laser um, that can equally uh, operate under this pulse mode anyway that aside uh, let's take a look at the circuit so this is a very standard uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, photomultiplied cir circuit basically we have uh, uh, resistive dividers to divide the 1250 uh, input voltage amongst all those dynodes and uh, the, the value of the resistors uh, actually affects uh, the linearity of the output so ideally you want them to be low so that uh, uh, any uh, light current goes through the photomultiplier does not affect the voltage division uh, but you know it wastes a lot of energy and also it's uh, uh, not very efficient uh, so what people typically do is you know for example here we have some uh, capacitors at the last three stages and uh, that usually can you know like uh, provide uh, the, uh, the current needed for this type of uh, short pulse uh, application and uh, so originally this uh, photomultiplier uh, unit I took uh, the resist resistors are all like three mag resistors which is a uh, you know which is uh, on a uh, very large uh, for a photomultiplier and so in order to increase the uh, the, the current output I replaced them with uh, a one megabyte a one meg not a megabyte one meg uh, resistors and uh, that allows me to uh, in, you know increase the sensitivity and uh, one one thing also i want to mention is about this load resistor uh, ideally again for these uh, low low noise applications you wanted this to be as uh, close to 50 ohm as possible because you know the output uh, bnc were uh, all the cabling but uh, you know if you can do some calculation if you put it to, to uh, 50 ohm and all but the voltage can be very small um, given the, uh, the the light current coming out so uh, in my application actually in this application what I did was I put a one kilo ohm uh, resistor here not again not ideal but uh, not a deal breaker either because you know as you saw earlier there were some ringings in my signal but uh, overall the uh, uh, you know we can as as long as you can distinguish the uh, the falling edge and rising edge of the signals uh, the impedance uh, of these are, are not that critical so now let's take a look at the actual photomultiplier so again uh, here is the the case uh, of the original photomultiplier and uh, if it open it up we can see that uh, uh, you know uh, you can see here the resistors I replaced with one mega ohm and uh, you will notice on pin 11 uh, we have a resistor connected to the uh, the, the this uh, going nowhere seems to be but it's actually a shielding um, basically shields the, uh, the, the outside of the uh, photomultiplier at the same potential as your uh, as your like, cathode and that is important because uh, otherwise uh, you know, imagine if the output is, uh, let's say, ground level, which is, uh, you know, uh, significantly higher than your uh, cathode voltage. What happens is it's going to affect the electron inside uh, to, you know, not, not to, to attract the, the electron to the outside uh, case instead of their, uh, you know, like respective uh, dynodes. So that will uh, significantly affect the performance of your photomultiplier and potentially in some severe cases it can cause arcing uh, between the uh, your uh, dynodes and uh, the outer casing so it is very important and uh, you know so I actually modified this a little bit uh, originally there were some resistors tied to different uh, you know color um, analysis circuitry but uh, I don't use those so I removed it I only left the filter inside 
So this filter I'm using actually works very well with the, uh, the red laser. Um, now, so as you can see that uh, then pretty much it uh, outputs, uh, then, you know, here is the output. I have this directly uh, going through this uh, coax going to my load resistor. I uh, forgot to mention that since there's no current flowing from your uh, cathode to uh, the outer casing, uh, this resistor really you 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 can uh, have it as as large as you want. So you know for this one I think it's like 20 meg or something like that. Um, the reason you don't want it to hook directly from cathode to the uh, outer casing is that in the event that you you know accidentally touch uh, touch the outside the case, uh, you might get the shocked right. So uh, by keeping this resistance large, uh, the current flowing through uh, your body in the event that you accidentally touch the case would be insignificant. And as to the power supply to the photomultiplier, again, I used a triple uh, five timer uh, configured as a A-stable uh, oscillator and oscillating at a frequency of uh, roughly uh, 30 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz to drive, uh, sorry, this one is a three to four kilohertz to drive this uh, step up transformer. And uh, this transformer itself uh, can step up, step up a 5 volt um, input voltage to around, uh, I think it's a 500 to 600. And then I have this uh, uh, voltage doubler at output to further step up uh, the voltage to roughly 1200 to 100, 2050 volts. And, uh, you know, the uh, resistors here, because I don't have a uh, uh, appropriate voltage uh, um, diode, so I use a two uh, uh, zero zero sevens, one and four zero zero sevens uh, in series, so that these two resistors are actually here to make sure that the voltage across these uh, two diodes are roughly the same. And uh, so the other, uh, you know, the other a step up converter is uh, roughly the same way. It's pretty much configured the same way, except that because of the uh, the core material is different for this transformer, for this transformer uh, than the other transformer, this one actually oscillates at a much higher frequency. This one, I think, it oscillates at 40 kilohertz, roughly, give or take. And uh, the output voltage is around 125 volts. Uh, so that uh, you know we we can use that to drive this laser diode. Another type of uh, device that is suitable for this kind of uh, fast rising signal detection is a pin photodiode. There are some very attractive uh, characteristics of a, a pin photodiode. Uh, one obvious one is that it does not require such a high supply voltage. Uh, it usually can work with uh, you know under 100 volts, uh, well under 100 volts. So unlike our, uh, you know, photomultiplier requires thousands of volts of uh, input voltage. And another uh, advantage of a photo pin diode is a pin photodiode is that uh, it has a very wide uh, dynamic range. Um, so our photomultiplier can get saturated very easily. You know, you turn on the light, as I, as I mentioned before, we're doing the, this test, uh, we cannot even have the lab light on because that little bit of light uh, uh, saturates the, uh, the, our you know, light current and uh, we won't be able to measure any meaningful signal. But in terms of uh, sensitivity, a pin diode is still not as sensitive, at least for most of the pin diodes, not as sensitive as your normal photomultiplier. Uh, photomultipliers can routinely be used for single photon detection, whereas for uh, your pin photodiodes, uh, most of the time, it can be used for very weak uh, light detection, not uh, single photon detection. So, and for other uh, semiconductor-based detectors, for uh, uh, to achieve this le level of sensitivity, is going to be very cost uh, prohibitive. Perhaps another good reason for us to use the uh, photomultiplier is that we do not need to amplify the output signal. As I said earlier, there's some you know, compromise because we used a 1K uh, resistor here, uh, 
because you know the the the, the current flowing through that is not significant to generate a large voltage across a 50 ohm uh, resistor, and we uh, don't have a sensitive enough scope to measure that small voltage. So we chose a 1k resistor, but nevertheless we didn't need a an extra amplification stage, and that was very important because. Uh, if you do need to am amplify the signal coming out, that amplifier would be uh, would would be a uh, trans impedance amplifier, meaning that you uh, amplify the output uh, current into a output voltage, and uh, that amplifier would have a very very high uh, bandwidth uh, gain product, and. Uh, uh, it would easily require over one gigahertz, uh, you know, the, the bandwidth uh, gain product in order to amplify the signal and provide a reasonably fast rising edge, uh, you know. And if you are looking at sub nanosecond uh, rising time, and that amplifier is going to be even more expensive. So for us, uh, you know, we actually can't we only need to look at the signal directly we didn't even have to use any kind of a magnify uh, to amplifier to magnify the signal anyway i hope you enjoy the video and uh, my explanation here and you can always go to my website uh, to find out more information and the, the related articles that i mentioned earlier uh, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up thanks and i'll see you next time